Hi, this is Suzanne in Ohio. I have a project share for you, kind of a process video. Um, I wanted to show you how I put it, put these little um, fabric postcards and fabric envelopes together. Now I saw this idea online on YouTube. I believe it might have been Shabby Dabby Doodah or Firefly. I'm not sure, but I had made some of these years ago, like three years ago, and I just tweaked my idea a little bit based on what she was doing. Now, she made um, a fabric postcard and decorated it much like this, but she had a postcard stamp, you know, big wooden block stamp that just stamped off a blank postcard. Well, I don't have that, and that's why years ago, a few years ago, I copied off my vintage postcards and vintage envelopes, the ones that you could still see the date, like that says 1947, and this one, um, I know it, let's see, like older. Uh, uh, some of them you can still see. They're like this one's 1931 and it made, it made a great image. I did paper and fabric back then, but she added some ideas to this that was just so cute. So let me first show you what I did and then I have a few undone ones half, half stage and that way you can get an idea how to put these together. So this was a postcard mailed in Canton, Ohio, and I'm pretty sure it was 1928 or something like that. What she did was um, stitched a little image here with some lace under it, and then I forget what she put as an embellishment, but I made some little yo-yos, and that's what I did. Um, when you turned them over, she said, Hers were plain on the back, but she suggested how cute they would be with printed fabric on the back. So that's what I did. And then I have these wonderful printouts from an online graphic artist. Um, I'll try to remember whose Etsy site I got that from. I believe Seneca Pond Crafts, but I'll double check that. Or Screech Owl Studios. Check out both of them. They're both great. And I just put these little strips of ribbon here so that you could quickly take that out, write a note on it, and slip it back in there. That was my first idea. And then I'll show you in the next batch that I came up with a better idea, even more than that. So there's one, and these little images I had, had laying around. I'm trying to use up what's on my desk. So here's the image, a little piece of lace in the back, a yo-yo, and a little piece of eyelash trim coming out the edge. It just gives it enough foo-foo um, and texture to make it very interesting. And again, this envelope print was 1947. And this one I backed with green, and there's the little vintage image from that. They're all different but all cute just real sweet. Now you could do this without making a romantic style or something like that. You could do them in farmhouse style or mid-century, you know, or just anything you'd want to put put on them. Your image and the way you add your fluff uh, will determine what personality they have. And there's another one of those 1931 um, um, cancellation stamps, a one cent stamp that envelope came to me through a friend, and I have, boy, I've put it to good use. Used it for many things. Here's a self-addressed or self-stamped envelope somebody used. That's a two cent. I think that's Benjamin Franklin on there, but I left this one kind of earthy tones because the envelope itself was so dark from age. And then so I put image of Wrens. Oh, and this date is 1918. Um, Wrens and a little yo-yo. And on the back, I stuck with more of an earthy print and a little journaling card that matched. 
aren't they just the cutest things? So sweet, and you could think of so many ideas to do with them. Of course, of course they go in your journals. Uh, this is a different envelope, one cent stamp, and not for positive, but I think, again, 1918 or 1928. I'm not sure. So, little yo-yo uh, back here. Sweet little print. And there you have it. Little print of a vintage textile that I have. You know, should I have brought you down closer through all this time? I'll show them to you again. And I've got more to show you in the process. And a little print. And this one, 1931 cancellation, same envelope that are, or postcard that I showed you before. And roses, and because that color was so intense, I chose this very intense uh, rose scrap back here. And this vintage or, or this uh, journaling card just goes perfect, absolutely perfect. So let me show you how these go together. Now, the person that showed these, um, she did a process video also. And I will try to find out who that is and link you to her. But in the meantime, here's what I did. So, with a few pointers. So here's a print of um, my envelope. It's kind of smallish. Has an upside down three cent stamp on it, which I think is awfully cute. So, I printed off my envelopes on printable fabric. You can, there's two ways to do that. You can either buy fabric that's already prepared to go through your printer, or there is a process of doing that with um, treating your fabric or, or not treating your fabric, but ironing it to freezer paper that holds it steady while you run it through your printer. I've done both. Um, if I was doing a humongous big project, I would do my own because it would be more cost effective. This prepared stuff is expensive. But I got six envelopes or six postcards per sheet. and No, I'm sorry, four. Um, the size I did them. And so I've done 16. So I used four sheets of that. Now that can get pricey. But for what I wanted for right now, that's what I did. So I have my print. Mine is printed on fabric. If you have one of those rubber stamp um, that looks like a postcard, you can stamp that right on muslin or any type of cotton. Uh, I think in her video she said she had an old sheet that she cut up and used. But anyways, that's what, you, that's what you have. You have your image first. And then I measured off exactly what size my image was and I cut a piece of batting. And that's what batting looks like. Quilt batting. You can buy the cheap kind. It doesn't matter for this because it's not going to be washed. And I turned this over and I sprayed a little spray based right here so that when I positioned this it would stay right where I put it and I can see my image right through that fabric so I just made sure I had it centered just pretty where, right it doesn't have to be perfect I'll tell you and if you don't have spray based just put a tiny bit of um, glue stick on there just enough to hold it in place because what you're going to do is turn it back over and you're going to form your little collage on here. So the first thing you want to do is pick out some scraps that kind of match or are in the vein of what you're trying to create. And this one, I just grabbed a handful of these. And I kind of like this one with this little gold on it. And it's leafy. And I kind of like this little piece of curtain lace. And just deciding what what I want it to do. Um, now, 
when I positioned this, I made sure I had it either down a little ways or up a little ways because I knew that I was going to later on, I was going to put a yo-yo on there. So that's what I did. I just held it with my thumb. I took it to the sewing machine and the first thing I did was just stitch around this image, which is on, um, mine's on presentation paper. Yours could be on cardstock or anything. I don't think paper, paper would be a good idea, but um, something a little sturdier, stitch around that. And that holds your trim in place. I do not want to plaster that trim down. I want some kind of movement and looseness to it. So let's pretend like I've stitched down my image. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay that aside right there. And then I'm going to, and I have it right here. Hold on just one second. Okay, I'm going to prepare my back. So what I'm going to do is um, prepare my back because I switched from this method to this method. Let me show you a finished one. I printed off um, this vintage postcard or envelope 1918 and I had superimposed or laid down on top of it a vintage calling card and this these little die cuts came from the same lady they're from the 1930s most of them were used at um, bridge clubs for whatever reason anyway here's somebody's calling card two little pieces of ephemera and I've copied it off and there's a nice image that I've got. So what I did was sew this on as a pocket and that is plenty room for a little note, money, or a gift card. So let's go back to the process. I printed these off and they came out a little pinker because my I put a new ink cartridge in but that it's not a fail because it still go, still looks nice. So what I'll do is punch the scoop out here and uh, distress ink all the way around the edge and lay it down perfectly in the center as much as I can. And this one's a little bit large, but you can get the idea. I'm going to use these for journaling cards. And then I will sew around three sides. And I thought it'd be easier to have a wide opening rather than a narrow opening. That way, um, no chance of ripping the card off if they if you have to put your fingers in there to get the uh, money card out or gift card, whatever the case might be. So let's pretend like that's sewn on there. And let's pretend like this is sewn on there. So then what I'm going to do is turn that over and position this sort of in the middle. Now you can see that my edges stick out. That's what I wanted. I don't have to have that there for demonstration anymore. But that's what I wanted. I wanted the shaggy, raggy edges to um, stick out. I like that look. So this is already sewn on. The pocket's sewn on the back. All I have to do is sew the two sandwiches together. So I just put this under my sewing machine and sewed right along. When I got right here where there was trim, I just held it up with my finger, come over here, turn the corner, and same thing here. Hold that back and sewed all the way around. And I'll show you what some of these finished ones look like. And I already showed you that one. I used uh, bird images mostly in this case. And then here's my little stash of yo-yos that I'm in the process of making. And I just dropped my needle. Oh, let's see. Okay. There. One with the needle in it. 
Now I'll put a smidgen of lace and maybe a bead in the middle of that, just like I did this one. Just a little circle smidgen of lace, pull it down tight and it kind of does its own little wrinkle and then stitch a little glass bead in there or anything you'd want. If you were doing a farmhouse style, you might want to do a button. It looks more country. So this one will probably get, oh, something like that. And then with a little piece of, oh, I'm not even in frame. This one will look a little bit like that. I can place it wherever is most beneficial and then put the lace put the lace on it, put the bead on it, and then I can stitch it to that or I can hot glue it or I can use fabric tack. And then with a little piece of eyelash yarn underneath it to make a good composition. So that's kind of how they go together. So this one, let's show you the others that are all ready for their yo-yos. That's what I'll be doing. So there's my little composition there. I like fabric on mine. I always try to pick up some of the tones that are in the image. And back here, I used a cream color, and there's how that looks stitched on. And then this one might get this little yo-yo here. I don't know yet. But what I did was I had a white yo-yo, and before I gathered it up, I put a piece of uh, teal colored tool on it, and then that changed the color. And I don't know if it's worth the trouble or not, but I like experimenting. So there you have that one. And this one, I used a little smidgen. This was laying on my sewing desk. A smidgen of a real old dresser scarf, and that's tatted edge on there. Uh, some embroidery on nylon and some fibers and what I'll do is take these fibers and spread them apart and fluff them out and you'll be able to see they readily pick up the green color in that little image. And on this one the yo-yo will probably go up here. So whatever you want to, however you want to make your composition. Let me show you the back of that one. Little pink print. And this one. The yo-yo will probably go somewhere down there. Don't forget, eyelash yarn coming out the edges. Little piece of lace in the center with a little glass bead. By the time you do that, wow. Got a nice, nice little, um, composition. This one with the wrens, I love that. And this is another one with the wren, so just look, uh, compare here how they look when you use different fibers behind them. This is a piece of stained cheesecloth, half of a ribbon I ripped into piece of curtain lace which I stained around the edge with a distress ink and then so because there's a tiny little pink berry in there and then you had the red printing of the the stamp and everything so I just added that little rose color there to pull it together and there's that one and then one more I love those little um, lovebirds 1931. Okay. All right. There's ideas for you. So take that and jump off like I did the other one. And as soon as I can remember where I saw this idea, um, I'll put that in the description below. But I've got so much to do today. I'll have to wait till tonight. That's my time to sit down and search YouTube. So I'll go ahead and post this and I'll come back later and I uh, give you the hookup <clears throat> for where I got that idea. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you can get some ideas from all this. <clears throat> and thank you for all the YouTubers who share with us and give us jump off points. Have fun today. Keep creating and come back again soon.